I've been giving DreamWorks the cold shoulder for years now. That all changes today. How to Train Your Dragon goes tail to tail with Kung Fu Panda. Pandas have tails, right? Like little stupid nubby ones. Still counts. Let's get started. These animated films tend to get actors of all walks of life to appeal to a broader audience. How to Train Your Dragon may have the most random bunch of uh, actors yet. Actors like Jonah Hill, Craig Ferguson, Gerard Butler, and Kristen Wiig lend their voices to a bunch of Vikings ready to take on dragons. American Ferreira plays the brave, strong yet compassionate Astrid. I gotta stop for a sec, point out I love the name America. So my name is Adam, possibly the dullest white kid name on the planet. Like my parents couldn't have thought outside the box for a second with something like soda or seven. Seinfeld reference for the two of you out there that got that. This is what I do on my show. I appeal to myself and no one else. I think my only gripe with How I Met Your Dragon was the lead character Hiccup. I love the character, don't get me wrong, he was great. But the guy that voiced him sounded like he was 45 years old. He's probably closer to mid-30s in real life. I'm referring to Jay Brackel, Brachel, Barracuda. I don't know how to say it. It's really just a small hiccup in an otherwise fantastic film. Hiccup is the name of the, the character. Let's go to the main star though, and that's Toothless. He's an awesome creature, and watching his transition from badass devil of the sky to essentially man's best friend was great to see. Let's move on to Kung Fu Panda, and I take back what I said earlier, this cast is even more random yet. We have actors such as Dustin Hoffman, Angelina Jolie, Jackie Chan, Seth Rogen, Lucy Liu, and David Cross all presenting animals with awesome martial arts skills. This is exactly how martial arts is done. It's just kind of like a... Michael Clark Duncan and Wayne Knight, Newman, also do voices in this. Yes, Newman, that was the second Seinfeld reference for the day. Our hero of the picture is a character named Poe, and he's voiced by Jack Black. If you're familiar with Jack Black, you will instantly recognize his distinct style of humor. Poe is very much an extension of Jack Black's type of humor. A lot of slapstick comedy, physical violence, and overall random noises throughout. Panda's antagonist is the adopted son of Master Shifu. A crazy snow leopard hell-bent on getting payback for not getting the title Dragon Warrior. This crazy cat's a hell of a lot of fun to watch, and the only thing I could think of that's cooler is a mountain-sized dragon. Skadoosh. We have the typical hero has to save the world, and it's usually the last guy you would ever think to do the job. He encounters people along the way that don't agree with him, but he'll win them over by the end of the film, and such is the case here. One could argue a similar setup is in place for How to Train Your Dragon, as Hiccup is kind of the, the last man you would think of to save this village, and bring peace to dragons and vikings alike. I mean, there's no real prophecy. Hiccup just kind of accidentally figures out that dragons aren't so bad. They're not just fire breathers with hot bodies. Okay, that sounded sexual. But their, their bodies are hot because of the fire, and well, let's just move on. My favorite part of How to Train a Dragon is the friendship that grows from Hiccup and Toothless. I really dug watching them work as a team, in tandem, to overcome a disability. There's a great message there. I mean, I don't know what it is, but I'm, uh, there's a great one there for, for kids. That first flight is so well done, so well choreographed, I can watch it over and over again. In fact, I actually have for several weeks now. My family's all but abandoned me. I smell like rotted corpse. Uh, dogs on the streets run, bark. They won't have anything to do with me. It's, it's actually quite depressing. But here I am in front of the camera for all you to hear. All right, like I said, Panda's more your typical Sunday afternoon storytelling. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, I just say things. Training montages, newly formed friendships, and an epic battle keep KFP moving at a quick and easily digestible pace. But the greatest thing Panda has going for it is heart. There's, there's a lot of love in this film. There's a lot of love in How to Train Your Dragon. It's a, they're feel-good films. I feel good watching them. I rarely swear at my family members when it's on. Everybody is Where Dragon may have a wing up in the story department, that was a wing, I don't think he can beat Panda when it comes to fighting. 
How to Train Your Dragon looks great, but for a film that came out in 2010, it seems older than Kung Fu Panda. In fact, I thought it was older until I looked it up and saw that Kung Fu Panda is a 2008 picture. <laughs> it's two years earlier. I was pleasantly surprised by how much action there is in Kung Fu Panda. Yes, it's called Kung Fu Panda, but still, it's a family flick. I just wasn't expecting this munch. Munch? Love that prison break sequence. Mmm, it's good. How to Train a Dragon has some great battles as well. There's a string of dragon training segments, and of course the final showdown with the Megalodon of dragons. That's pretty cool, right? Kung Fu Panda wins this round. Alright, normally I half-ass the music round because it's late in the day and music doesn't excite me as much, but this one, this would be criminal not to talk about, is How to Train Your Dragon score makes this film. It really does. The guy to thank for this is John Powell, a man that was on many occasions considered the superior composer to Hans Zimmer. By Hans Zimmer, that's a Hans Zimmer quote. The word epic is thrown around a lot, far too loosely. But here it makes sense. Here it's appropriate. Short for appropriate. The score is powerful on so many levels and hits at all the right times. The Celtic sounds and the overall beauty of the composition take you into the movie right alongside Toothless and Hiccup. I've already spent far too long talking about music, but let's move on to Kung Fu Panda. I've already mentioned Hans Zimmer in passing, and it turns out he scored our Tubby Panda's movie as well. And John Powell collaborated with them. It's all coming full circle now, isn't it? DreamWorks has built up quite the catalog over the years. <laughs> they're right up there. They're right up there with Pixar. Let's just say this, they're both winners in my book. But what about you? What are your thoughts? Pop them in the comments below. Maybe subscribe if you feel like being a decent individual. And uh, you know, we'll chat later. More than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. What? Now. Yes, How to Train the Dragon is the superior film. There's no question about that.